my Jews. I am Aishwarya and this is the start for mission midterms, right? We know that we have a 45 day plan for you where we will be helping you out end to end with the preparation for your midterms and this is going to be the first class for grade 8. Hi everyone and welcome to the class. I can already see all of you are here. Yes, I have 22 of you here in class, but I need some more of you. I have Ritika, I have Garvit, Papia's here, Bhavya, Anshuman, Aditya, Rudrakshi, Harsimran is here. Hello. Hi Aditya. Yes, Motivation World is here. Motivation World, please tell me your name so that I know who you are. Yes, all right. So now, of course, I'm sure that you know what mission midterms means, right? We constantly keep, you know, talking about mission midterms and the time is here. It's August 1st and it's time to get serious. So I hope that all of you have your notebooks, your pens with you. In case if you don't have it with you, please do get it and come have a sp proper space set up where, you know, you're able to sit and focus on the class. Because we've had a lot of classes together and you know today is the class where we are going to be covering crop production and management which is the first chapter in grade 8 and we look at the whole chapter at one go, at one shot, right? So I want you to have everything with you. I want you to make sure you have a bottle of water so that if you're feeling thirsty in between, drink some water. Don't get up and miss out on the session, yes? Very, very important thing that you need to do today. Are we all with me today? Yes, is my audio, my video and my screen and what I am writing visible to you? Yes? Very good, Aditya is ready with the pen and book. What about the others in the class, right? Everyone, I want all of you to get re ready with all the things that you need for this class. So can you quickly tell me how many students are there in the session? Ravi? All right. Okay. So I can see about 22 of you are here, but let's quickly, you know, make sure that we tell our friends to be part of the class, right? 27 are here. Munna Pandit is telling me. Very good. We need more, right? It's a very, very important session that we are covering today. All right. I'm going to wait for another one minute. And in the meanwhile, I'm sure all of you saw this beautiful video before the class started, right? Yes, so you saw this beautiful video which was all about Anthe. And if you are passionate to becoming a doctor or an engineer, you know that Anthe will be the first step that you need to take part in. Because it will be your first exposure to competitive exams. And of course, as you know, it's Akash National Talent Hunt exam. And if you give the exam, there is a potential that you may either get 100% scholarship to Akash courses and of course you may win a trip to NASA, right? Few lucky students will be winning that. Cash rewards are there. And of course, the most important thing, especially for all of you in this grade, right, that you are in, it gives you and gives you an understanding about your potential. Some of you may have a lot more potential than what you are seeing. And this potential will definitely come. And if you tap into that potential, someday your name could also be here, right? Maybe one of you here would be, you know, an All India Ranker for maybe JE or maybe NEET. So don't ever dream less, right? Always have that ambition high up here. Very good, Anshuman has registered. Ruchi, we will be telling you about the syllabus for Anthe in great detail. For now, just make sure that you are making sure that, you know, you are registering for it. Yes, Ritika, please tell me what is the doubt that you have regarding midterms. I will be telling you. Because you know that today's class is all about mission midterms, right? And here is a quick peek into what you can expect from us. So as you can see, you'll have session notes and PDFs and you'll have chapter one shots. And we'll have exam focused important questions. For math, we'll be looking at cheat sheets, doubt solving classes and exam strategy sessions. Yes. Now, I'm going to quickly take you in the meanwhile where we wait for our students to come in, right? I'm going to quickly take you through the plan for this particular chapter. Yes. So in this particular session, if you see for this particular chapter, that is crop production, right? We see that we're going to start off with the one shot that is there. So today's class is going to be that. And the next thing that we will be doing for this particular chapter is the NCRT sprint. And we're going to be picking up some top 15 important and slightly tough questions from NCRT and Exemplar. 
and then we will move on to looking at quizzes of course we always need to evaluate ourselves so the next thing will be quiz time where of course you know we're going to have our beloved menti quiz and last but not the least we are going to be having doubt clearing sessions as well so are you with me i want you to write this plan for the chapter and anshuman if you want to get the pdf notes you can join the telegram channel because you know that we give you all the updates right where will our midterms be so the midterms that we are preparing you for ritika and all you wonderful students here are for the midterms that you will be giving in your schools right you may be having it at different different times some of you may have it in 15 days some of you may be having it you know much later in september but our intention is to give you an all round preparation so that we you get this understanding that you know when it's exam time when it's time to get serious we are there for you and of course when the exam season is gone we come back with some interesting things where you know you can enjoy in the class right so we are always there for you no matter what yes i know all of you are excited for the quiz but today's class is going to be a one shot class where you and i will both discuss crop production because crop production was a class that we learned in great detail right we had five four to five elaborate sessions on crop production and i am sure all of you are experts by now and Before I just get started there's another very very interesting thing which we are going to be starting for biology and here as you can see we are going to be introducing worksheets right so can you see here these are some worksheets where we can see that there are 10 Uh, four questions for 10 marks right and there will be a google form link in the description box now all you need to do is that you can go there and fill up so these will be like practice questions that we will be giving out to all of you and in case if you are going to be so tomorrow say you're coming back and watching this video you can always give these answers the google form will always be open this is for your practice in writing answers and towards the end around the doubt solving sessions or we will have a separate session where we will discuss these questions and i will call out some of the top answers that were given to us as well right yes result of byju's midterms so this is very important anita the, i mean ritika that this mid prepar mission midterms is a preparation right just like how if you are writing board exams or your final exams you will prepare for it no similarly we are also helping you out with the preparation for all your midterm chapters that are coming and ritika if you have more doubts just stay tuned for maybe one more hour because saurabh sir and i are coming at 7 pm to discuss the same with all of you in greater detail and some of you were asking me why kriti ma'am could not make it but sadly kriti ma'am wanted to be there for that class but she's not keeping well today so let's pray for her good health so that she recovers soon and she's back with us very very soon yes all right guys very quickly we've had about 10 minutes we have a good number of students who have joined the class i can see that we have good 30 students but i'm hoping that as the class goes we will have more and more students who are going to be a part of it quickly How excited are all of you for today's class? I want you to send me a thumbs up in the chat very quickly to show your level of excitement. Yes? Very good everyone, very good. Hi Anika, hi Mahesh. Yes. Hi ZB. All right. Okay, uh, Hamad says that you've not understood. Okay, Hamad, please tell me what is it that you've not followed? I will quickly tell you as I see it. Super duper excited! Amazing, everyone! Amazing! Yes, Santwana is excited. That is great. This excitement is all that we need, and we will do one thing. See, crop production and management is a pretty big chapter, so we will take like a minute or two breathing breaks in between, also because when you you know learn so much, also sometimes it becomes a lot of information, right? So we will take it in our own face. Yes. Anshuman I will tell you about the telegram channel towards the end okay so because we're going to get started with the class I'll tell you how to join and all of that don't worry okay so now when we talk about crop production and management right the basic that you need to have an understanding about is agriculture yes now how can we define agriculture so for those of you who have a, who do not have an understanding of what is agriculture you can write this definition down as i said So agriculture can be defined as a branch of science that deals with the cultivation of crops 
and livestock at a large scale for the commercial purposes right for certain when i say commercial purpose it means for the day to day things that we do right and that is what we call as agriculture and your key words here in this definition is going to be crops and livestock yes so these are your key words that are going to be there now of course in this particular chapter we dealt greatly about what are crops right now crops can be simply defined again a very important definition i want you to make a note even if you are not writing this definition down just make a note in your notebook saying that it's important to remember this definition that crops are nothing but the same kind of plants which are cultivated together on a large scale Yes, so here as you can see we have a farm, we have a field where we have a single piece of land wherein one type of crop is grown at a large scale. And this is what we understand as crops. Very simple and easy definition of agriculture and crops, right? Now of course we also learned and in this particular chapter especially we have learned about how there are various kinds of crops, right? Now crops can be categorized in multiple ways. but what we need to focus on is based on their climatic conditions so here as you can see this is based on climatic conditions yes now based on climatic conditions we can categorize crops as karif crops rabi crops and zaid crops right so this is very important to remember Hello Kempama welcome to the class i can see here that you know i'm ashwarya and i'm teaching the chapter crop production and management very good so can all of you very quickly tell me what are kharif crops in the chat you have some hint on the screen as well but i want all of you to tell me as well i want the chat to keep going right because you also know what what are kharif rabi and zaid crops yes so can you tell me what are kharif rabi and zaid crops yes Well, well, all the best, Nina. All the best. Right, very good. Karif crops are those crops which are sown in the rainy season. Very good. So it's important that you un use this term, right? That it is sown in the rainy season or sown. on the onset of monsoon right so this is very important to understand while rabi crops are those which are sown in the winter season yes these are seasonal crops very good anshuman very good we'll say rainy rain crops or papaya another way that we can tell is monsoon crops right okay ankita very sorry about that then lastly we have zaid crops which are sown between kharif and rabi season or like how we have ankita telling us here that it is also sown during the summer season right so here when you are writing about kharif rabi and zaid you need to mention when they are sown so sown on the onset of monsoon sown on the onset of winter and sown on the onset of summer season so this is again very important to remember when you are writing the answers right now of course the next thing that you need to remember is when you are saying onset of monsoon onset of winter you need to remember the months okay all of you write this down very important so what are the months in which we sow this So in the case of kharif we see that it's between june to september right so around june july we will sow the seeds and around september october we will get the whole plants grown yes and then we have october to march for we rabi crops where we sow the seeds around october november and we cultivate of the crop will get harvested towards the end of you know february or march yes pumpkin is a zaid crop right amazing shweta we will definitely be doing more such videos don't worry about that and then of course in the case of zaid crops we will sow it sow the seeds around the end of maybe march or beginning of april but they tend to grow pretty fast so by the end of may or june we see that they will be able to get it right or we get we see that they will be harvested and here these are some examples and now of course i will give you some short ways of remembering examples because i do understand that some of you may not be able to remember them very easily right So in the case of kharif crops how many of you remember the short forms that we had discussed in earlier sessions of course any of you remember some short forms in which we can remember examples can you tell me yes we will be sharing the session notes in telegram right very good winter crops they are also known as winter crops we had some short forms right yes very good prakash pmw 
So we had PMW. In this case, of course, you can make any kind of order that you want to, right? So in this case, I had RMC. So R here is for rice, right? M here is for maize. And C here is for cotton. And that way you will be able to remember three examples, right? Yes, they are car names, PMW. So here we had BMW itself, uh, Radha. So here we had BMW. So B for barley. We have M here for mustard, right? And we have C here for, I'm sorry, BMW, I wrote BMC. V, w here for wheat. So this is the way you would remember the Rabi crops and the examples that are there. Then of course for Z crops, it was PWC, right? So PWC here is pumpkin. Yes, we have watermelon and lastly we have cucumber. So for those of you who may be watching this video for the first time, these are some easy ways in which you can remember Karif, Rabi and Z crop. Yes, are we clear with this so far? Anybody has any doubts? I don't want any of you to have any confusions with these concepts because it's a one shot and of course, you know, it's sometimes a little tricky to go in depth. But of course, these are the broad important terms that you must be able to see. Could you please change that color? Oh, on mustard, I will change the color. Okay, the other ones I think you will be able to see. So M here is for mustard and you can write this down or take a screenshot. Yes, easy peasy, no doubts. Amazing, amazing. You do know that at any point, if you're having any doubts, you can ask me, right? That way it will definitely be helpful for all of you. Great. Now, very quickly, so we learnt about crops, we, we know what is agriculture, we learnt about the different kinds of crops that are there which are cultivated. Now, in order to practice agriculture, how many steps are involved? Can you all quickly tell me how many agricultural steps are there? Is it 4, 5, 6, 7? Can you all tell me in the chat very quickly? Very good everyone, very good. I want to see this going very fast. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. As you can see here, there are seven agricultural steps that are there. So we have preparation of soil, sowing, addition of nutrients, irrigation, removal of weeds, harvesting and storage, right? Yes. So this number seven is extremely important. And another thing that you all need to remember, especially when you are studying, is the sequence of it. It should not be that you know all the steps, but you don't know the sequence of the steps. So the sequence of what comes after what is important because you get questions of the same as well. So here's a small thing for you to write down in your notebooks. Sequence of agricultural practices are important because sometimes you get questions to write them in the correct order. Yes, please make a note of it. Yes, I have made a mind map on this chapter as well. And if some of you are new, you can go check that out. It is the easiest mind map that you can make for this particular chapter. Thank you so much, Harsimran. Yes, seven steps like the seven rainbow. Very good. So first up, let us have a look at preparation of soil. Now, in order to grow any plant, right, soil is extremely important. Because we know that soil consists of various nutrients that are necessary for the growth of the plant. And we also know that there are various components. There are some microbes in soil that are essential and that help with the that help in promoting growth, right? Which is why it is important that you prepare the soil. Now, what do we mean by prepare the soil? Now, the thing is that soil needs to be turned and loosened up. So let me use another color so that you can see this. Soil needs to be turned and loosened up. That means you turn it and you loosen the soil before we sow the seeds so that there can be aeration, right? So there will be aeration for the roots, right? So that is very important. And we see that it allows the roots to penetrate deeper into the soil. Now we also see that as we mix it, right? We, as we, you know, help, as we loosen and turn the soil, we also see that the nutrients are distributed uniformly because normally what happens is that the top layer of the soil the top one layer will have maximum nutrients 
but as the layer goes down the nutrient content would be relatively less i would say which is why it is important to turn and loosen the soil right and we call this process of turning and loosening as tilling or plowing right so this is very very important that you understand why preparation of soil is done very good let's keep up it's called tilling or plowing right so this is again important and yes i will share the mind maps with all of you now another thing that is very important right along with tilling and plowing is leveling right now what happens is that sometimes when we are going to you know turn and loosen the soil what we also observe is that at times the soil might be very dry which is why we need to add some amount of water so that the process becomes smoother but at the same time what will happen is that sometimes the soil will be like there as clumps right so here as you can see there will be clumps of soil that might be present and we cannot grow crops with a lot of clumps of soil which is why we need to break those clumps and level it out and this process again all of you write this down this particular process of breaking down the clumps into equal parts or distributing it evenly is what we call as leveling and a leveler is used very good sneha we use a leveler to do leveling so you can write this down as well now what is the third point it helps the earthworms and microbes to add hummus now hummus is a layer wherein there are a lot of nutrients right so it is formed due to the decomposition or the breakdown of dead and decaying matter and it is very rich in nutrients and these earthworms and microbes which are there in the soil actually promote the formation of hummus so like i was telling you right there's only one thin layer of soil that has a lot of nutrients so as you turn and loosen the soil your nutrients will get distributed uniformly and thereby the crops will be able to grow so are we clear with why preparation of soil is necessary yes we saw there is tilling plowing leveling three terms that you need to remember i am going to write this down as well we have plowing and we have tilling and leveling these are three terms you need to know when it comes to preparation of soil wonderful wonderful neena are we clear i think you have just sent me what so if there's a doubt let me know i am going very slowly yes to increase the water holding capacity very good why is leveling more important leveling is important because if there are clumps right the roots and the crops will not be able to grow properly which is why you need to level the soil you will get the notes yashika don't worry about it you will definitely get all the notes now we see that in order to do all of this we require certain tools which is why we see that we have some traditional tools here such as a plow and a hoe right wherein we see that there's a lot of manual labor necessary and of course we have modern tools where we see that we have a cultivator which is paired with a tractor so that the tractor can pull it right now when we talk about plow and hoe we see that plow here is used to till and turn the soil and in some cases it is also used to remove weeds hoe is again used to manually loosen up the soil and also is used for removal of weeds which of course we will look later on in the class as well then we have cultivator which is a modern device so you need to know the difference between the which are all the traditional tools and which are all the modern tools yes and i will tell you tanvi i will tell you can we do this at the end of the class if you don't mind right so let's focus on this yes arpita i'm going to take this one more time now here as you can see we have plow and hoe right now plow here as you can see i will explain the structure yes so in the case of plow we have a plow shaft right so this long rod that you call as a shaft then we have this triangular structure that is there which we call as the plow share and here as you can see we have the handle now this particular handle that will be there is something that you either place on the bullocks or it will just you know be there which where in the man can hold it and he will you know take it like this and he will make sure that the soil is prepared while in the case of hoe you can see that there's a flat metal plate that is there and of course there's a grip like structure that helps with it and we see that this helps in cutting down so it acts like a blade and it will make sure that it helps with preparation of soil right so are we clear with this plow share shaft and beam or handle is what we are part of a plow hi sunshine hello 
So with this, we come to the end of looking at preparation of soil, where we know what is preparation of soil. And you must remember the tools, which are all the traditional tools and which are all the modern tools, right? I will be giving you notes, don't worry. As and when I'm telling you that these are important, right? I want you to make sure that you make a note of it in your notebook that this is important. I need to write it this way. The rest of the notes, I will definitely give you this. You will get as a session PDF. So don't worry. Okay, all of you, for those of you who are worried about notes, don't worry about it. Yes? Now let's quickly look at step number two, that is sowing of seeds. Now at one go, we'll think sowing of seeds, so simple, no, why do we need to even learn about it? Now the thing is, sowing of seeds and if sowing of seeds is done in the right way, it actually helps with cultivation of crops, right? Yes, Neha, putting seeds into the soil or process of planting the seeds in the soil is what we call as sowing of seeds. But there are a lot of things that we need to remember. Yes, Akshat, we need to sell, uh, sow it evenly. Very good, Nina. Putting uh, seed selection is necessary. Yes, these are methods in which we do it. Very good, Harsimran. I can see the answers. And I want all of you to keep sending in answers. I am reading as I am teaching it as well, right? It needs to be at a proper distance from each other. Very good. So first thing that we need to, of course, check is the seed quality that is there, right? Now, seed quality matters a lot. And we check the seed quality by taking the seeds that we have and putting it in water. And we know that the damaged seeds will float on top and the good seeds will be present at the bottom. Now, it's important to select good quality seeds because because basically the yield of the crop depends on it, right? So when I say yield, because I was just thinking, should I use the term yield or no? But yield is nothing but how well the plant grows. It's as simple as that, right? And apart from that, yes, Ayushi, proper season, proper depth, the distance between the seeds is important, right? So all of these things are necessary. Now, of course, there are various ways in which we can do uh, seed, uh, you know, sowing of seeds. Now, of course, like earlier Harsimran has mentioned, we have broadcast method. Now, in broadcast method, it's nothing but when the farmer takes the seeds and he just throws it randomly. It just randomly scattered all over the field. Now, it is not ideal because we know that it takes a lot of effort, right? And we also see that in this case, Sometimes they may not be prop at proper distances and if they're not sown at a proper depth, those birds will come and they will feed on these seeds and take it away, right? So a lot of loss for the farmer. Now, of course, again, we have funnel sowing, which is a traditional method, right? And we know that we use this particular tool to sow the seeds. Now, of course, there are various advantages that it is sown at a certain depth and we also see that, you know, in a lot of ways they are equidistant, but it requires a lot of manual labor. Yes, junior gaming using seed drill is much better. Yes, very good, very good. Modern tool is always better. So here, as you can see, the modern tool is the seed drill, while the traditional tool is by using funnel sowing technique. Yes, very good, everybody. Very good. Yes. So with this, we've had a look at sowing of seeds. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the next very big chunk, right? A very big chunk of information that is on addition of nutrients. Now, very quickly, I already told this answer, right? But I want another answer from all of you. Can you all tell me why are nutrients necessary for the plant, right? What is nursery of plant? Transplant. Okay. Yashika, can I take this question towards the end? Because I think we may digress. It's a little new thing that we're learning about, right? So I'll do it. I'll promise that I do. I will take this answer question towards the end. Very good. For growth, you're giving me the answers. Manure and fertilizers. Thank you, Yashika. Yes, for proper growth of plants. Yes, for growth and development of plants, right? So normally we know that nutrients are necessary for the plants, for their growth, for their development, right? And when there is more amount of nutrients, the soil will be fertile. Very good. Yes, Ritika. For, of course, manure is a way in which we add these nutrients. Now, of course, what happens is that when we take a piece of land, right? And we grow many, many crops on it, right? We're constantly growing crops. Each plant is going to keep utilizing nutrients, right? Whether it is this plant or this plant or this plant, they will all keep taking nutrients, which means that eventually 
the nutrients will start to or the amount of nutrients will decrease, right? They will become less. So earlier what people used to do is they would be like, okay, maybe what we need to do is just let the land be for some time and the nutrients will come back on its own, right? Because we know that the microorganisms are there, the earthworms are there and by their action, of course, they can improve the soil fertility. And this process of just letting the land be without doing anything is what we call as land fallowing. Very, very important everybody because sometimes you do get questions on what is land fallowing for maybe one or two marks, right? So write this down as to what is land fallowing, nothing but leaving the land to self replenish. Yes? Very good everyone, very good. I can see the answers coming and you've done a wonderful job. Land is left uncultivated. But why can't we do this? I mean, land following seems to be a very reasonable thing, right? But why is this not utilized? Why are we using manure and fertilizers? Yes, it is also known as field fallow. Very good, Aditya. Very good. Hi, Pragati. Welcome to the class. We are doing crop production and management in one shot, right? Yes, very good. It's okay if it is not part of your textbook. Some little extra information is always good. Don't worry about it, right? Growing same crop year after year is called as monoculture. Very good. Because it takes time. And of course, we need to feed the population, right? Very good, Arpita. We need to feed the growing population. Which means that we cannot stop growing crops. Because it's extremely important that, you know, if we grow these crops, right, we're constantly growing, we meet the need of the food that is there. Which is why we add manures and fertilizers. Yes? No problem, Manya. No problem at all. It's okay. We are doing the crop production and management in one shot. Now, of course, when we talk about manure, we know that, and again, for all of you out there, this is so important that you are, you know, writing this pointer down, right? Please write this point down. That manure is the organic matter which is derived from plant and animal waste. So this is important. It is organic in nature. And we obtain manure by digging a hole and adding this plant and animal waste and we cover it with some microbes. And now what these microbes do is these microbes will act on the plant and animal matter, break it down into the nutrients. And that is why we see here that this manure will be rich in nutrients. Yes, I will be giving it to you. Cow dung, dead plants, very good, very, very good. Yes? All right. Now, when we look at some advantages of manure, we see that manure, when we add it to the soil and we mix it well, we see that it improves the water holding capacity. And we know that water is also necessary, right, for the plants, yes? So we see that it improves the water holding capacity and it also helps with the soil texture, makes the soil porous so that the water can go better. Now, of course, we see that as we add manure, it increases the friendly microbes that are there and it improves the soil texture, yes? Very good, we can do it and obtain it by vermicompost as well. Very good, everyone, very good, yes. All right, that's amazing, Sneha. Now, of course, one disadvantage is I would say about manure is that the amount of nutrients. So imagine this is my one kg of manure. I will not be able to tell, I'll not be able to predict how much of these nutrients I would have, right? Sometimes there may be some more of it or maybe there might be some less. So the nutrient range or how much of the nutrients would be there would not be properly defined. Yes, and it's also very bulky. Very good. And it is natural and eco-friendly. So this is all about manure, right? How is soil texture important? So because if you see, when we talk about water retaining capacity, how the soil is, right? The kind of soil particles that are there would determine. And I'm sure you would have watched an experiment shot on percolation rate, right? And we know that if the, if the soil particles are big and we know that if they are, you know, like clay soil, they are packed together, they'll be able to retain water, right? And a lot of things there along the lines of soil, but this is a very broad, I would say, overview of it, that the soil texture is based on the kind of soil particles that would determine how much water can be held. Yes? I hope that you are clear with this. Are we clear with this pointer? How are compost and manure different? 
Now see compost I would say is what we get at the end of composting right and when we are using it in an agricultural land we refer it to as manure that's the only main difference I would say right and that's something that we need to understand. Yes land following and crop rotation they are not the same they are different yes. Mania, if you could just rewind back, I've already given a definition for um, crop land following, right? Wherein we leave the land um, as it is so that it can self-replenish. For crop rotation and vermicompost, I will be giving it to you in just a bit. Which is better, manure or fertilizer? Ma'am, derived means obtain. We get it from them, right? We derive it from somebody means we are getting it from somebody, yes? Devjani, I'm going to come to that. Don't worry. Towards the end, we are going to be talking about that. Yes? Very good, Akshat. Very good. Now, of course, I'm going to look into what is Nina telling me about what is better, manure or fertilizer. For that, we need to know what are fertilizers, right? So, fertilizers are nothing but inorganic salts that are manufactured in the factories. Make a note of this, everybody. All of you, I want you to write this down inorganic main point of difference especially when you get questions on manure and fertilizer one is organic another one is inorganic right and here as you can see we see here that it is manufactured in the factories which means it is artificial right inorganic means that it's not directly from natural sources right in that case we were decomposing plants and animals but here we are getting it chemically yes this is what we call as fertilizers and we know that fertilizers have N, P and K in them. Now, so N, P, K is one kind of fertilizer I would say where we have nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Yes, very good Sneha, they are man-made, right? We also see that urea is an example of a fertilizer which is normally added to the soil, right? Now, of course, there are benefits because we see that fertilizers, when added to the soil, they provide primary nutrients, they're very easy to store and, of course, provide high yield, right? So, in this case, if you see when you add small amounts of it, right, like I saw Tanvi's answer, both fertilizers and manure are good. But the thing is, when there is excessive use, right, way too much use of fertilizers, that is when we see here that there would be some disadvantages where they will reduce the soil fertility. Now, how are they reducing soil fertility? Simply because we know that when there are too many chemicals in the soil, it will cause chemical imbalance, right? So, it will cause chemical imbalance and that is how it will affect the soil fertility. Examples I already told you, I've given you two, right? And I think you need to know, uh, there, I, I think, yeah, I remember three of it, yes? So, I've already told you urea, NPK, and I also saw Harsimran give me an answer on this. Yes, potash is also there. Very good, very good. Right quantity, it is okay to use. Superphosphate is also there. Yes, very good. This session will go on for another 20 more minutes. It's going to be a one-hour session today because, simply because you know, it's a long chapter, it's a very, very big chapter and we're trying to concise it as much as possible, right? 2,4-D will not be an example for fertilizer. It will be an example for weedy side, okay? So let's be careful on how we use 2,4-D. Now we are also see that fertilizers are responsible for causing water pollution and it can be harmful for health as well. So now, of course, for all of you who are asking me, right? Ma'am, should we use manure or should we use fertilizers? Manure is obtained naturally and it is eco-friendly, right? And we know that in no way when it's something that's coming from nature, it will not really harm the nature. But here fertilizers are man-made and excessive use can have, you know, dire, uh, I would say, consequences. Which is why it is important that we use the right amount of it. We will be doing menti later on, right? So it's extremely important. Fertilizers also fulfill the need of nitrogen. Yes, they do, right? They do fulfill the need. Fertilizer, yes, I, this is a very common question. Normally what happens is that, you know, in some cases, right, it's used interchangeably. Harsimran, I would recommend you write the one that is on the screen, right? As per NCRT also, it is S, so let's follow that. Now, before we take a small short break, right, I'll give you one minute of a break because it's a lot of information that we've dealt. I'm going to quickly do crop rotation. Now, this here is an alternative technique that can be applied to make sure that the nutrients are getting there, right? So, the nutrients are sort of utilized wisely, yes? 
So this is how we will utilize nutrients wisely. Wherein we see here that we may be not using fertilizers, but we are using some friendly plants which we know as the leguminous plants. And here we see that in crop rotation, it is a farming technique, right? Mania, you are asking me for this definition, you can write this down. Crop rotation is a technique by which we grow crops alternatively on the same piece of land, right? I'm going to repeat this once again. Crop rotation can be defined as a farming technique by which we grow crops alternatively on the same piece of land so that we can use these crops so, so that the nutrients can be utilized wisely. And normally here, as you can see, we have examples of soybean, right? So say in one uh, cycle, we are growing corn. In the next cycle, we will grow soybean, which is a leguminous plant that will replenish the soil with nitrogen, right? So I hope this is helpful for all of you. Yes, very good, wheat and mustard. Yes, legumes consist of rhizobium. Can you write this down? I would love to, Jannat, but I am running a little short on time and we have a lot more to cover. So, you can go back and watch it. Don't worry. Like, in, in case if you have not been able to write it as I am saying, always come back, watch the part of the video that you want to, play it slowly and watch it. Don't worry. Yes? All right, everybody. Are we clear with this so far? Are we clear? Any doubts? Have I missed out some questions? Yes? Okay, let's just take a minute breather, right? Drink some water, everyone. All of you, please drink some water. Because I know, like, just these three topics are very, very heavy, right? How to join the Telegram channel? So, Santwana, there's a link in the description box. You can click on it and you can join Telegram, right? It is break time because I was feeling, like, you know, I was a little bit thirsty. Wormy composting. So, Rekha, vermi composting is nothing but when you, the same process of compost, but what we will do is we will just add earthworms to it and earthworms will help with the breakdown of those complex nutrients into simple forms, right? So, that is what we mean by vermi compost. Very simple. So far, are we clear with everything, everybody? Any doubt so far? Yes, for language, we'll have to wait it out, Radha. We will have to wait it out. Join the classes. Yes, very good, Daksh. Ravindra, what are you telling me? Uh, which classes is what I would like to confirm? So, Harsimran, when we talk about worms in general, uh, red worms is, I would say, a very directed category of earthworms that we are talking about. But yes, they are, uh, in terms of species, they may be different because when we, that is something that you will learn in your higher grades, right? So, don't worry. I will make a mind map very soon. Thank you so much. I will definitely make a mind map. Yes. Okay then everyone. Very good. Very good. Are we geared up? Very quickly. We are going to wrap it up in 15 minutes. Right? All right. Okay. Crop rot. So again, I will take this question towards the end of it because I think that if I go there and we are a little short on time as well. So for those of you who have doubts which may or may not have been cleared during the class, drop me your comments in the, uh, you know, you can drop your doubts in the comment section. I will definitely reply to that. Don't worry, okay? Okay, everyone, we are going to get started. Are we ready for the last sprint where we are quickly going to look at the next four steps? Yes? Quickly give me a thumbs up. Only 15 minutes left. Yes. So we're going to quickly do it. They're all very simple. So from here, irrigation is a very, very big one, right? Yes. All right, everybody. Yes. Very good. Can I see the hands coming in? Amazing everybody, love the enthusiasm, like you are so enthusiastic throughout the class and that is great. Now let's quickly move on to the next part that is irrigation and again irrigation is a very simple topic, I'm telling you it is super super easy but because of all the names that come in we always tend to feel like it is very tough. So what do we mean by irrigation? 
Irrigation can be simply defined as providing or supplying water to the crops at regular intervals. Yes, so this part of it is very important. Please write it down. The key word here is that they are supplied at regular intervals. Now, why do you think irrigation is necessary? What is the importance of irrigation? You guys can tell me and I'm going to keep writing this down, right? Now, first and foremost, of course, we know that for the germination of seeds or for the seeds to grow, we require the water to be there, right? Now, at the same time, we also see that for the absorption of nutrients. Yes, we know that soil has nutrients and plants need to absorb it. But for the nutrients to get absorbed, water is essential. Yes, plants are made up of water, right? Nutrient transportation, absorption of minerals, right? And we also know that it helps in the growth of healthy crops that are there, yes? And another very interesting thing, which most often we tend to forget, is that water protects them from hot air currents and frost right so this right here is very important and we also see here that for the whole process we know that at the end of the day water is necessary for the process of you know for the synthesis and for the production of food as well so for photosynthesis as well water is a raw material so effectively for a healthy crop to grow water is necessary very good Aditya very very good so these are the reasons as to why irrigation is necessary and all of you can write this down in case if you are not able to write it down don't worry session pdfs will be given else you can come back watch the video and write it down don't worry about it just make a note that you need to do this yes now, when we talk about methods of irrigation, we know that there is traditional methods and there are modern methods. Now, for traditional methods, we see that we have Moat, Chain Pump, Dekli and Rahat. Now, all of these use, you know, we see that there is a wheel, we see that there will be like a, a you know, like a bucket with a long wire connected and a lot of manual labor is involved into all of this. But in all of these cases, we see that apart from a lot of manual effort, right? So a lot of, you, you know, a lot of in, uh, effort is invested into this. Yes. Now, apart from this, we also see that there is uneven supply of water. Now, when there's uneven supply of water, what happens is that in a piece of land, one part will have lots of water, while some parts will have very little water. And when it is not distributed properly, plants will not be able to grow, right? So in this case, we see here that in this case, it's very important that you understand that these are the drawbacks of having traditional methods, which is why the modern methods that are there are much better, which includes sprinkler system and drip system. Now, sprinkler system is when you have a sprinkler, as you can see here with some nozzles on top, and it will sprinkle water all over. And it is very ideal for uneven land, right? For lands which are uneven, sprinkler system is the best. While in the case of drip system, what, what we observe is that these pipes are underground and they will provide water drip, drop by drop. And this is, if, this is very, very beneficial for places where there is very little water available. So I'm going to say very little or scarce amount of water that is available, right? Yes, modern, modern method is much better than traditional method. Rotating nozzles are there in sprinkler system. So this was all about irrigation. Very simple, very easy, right? Nothing to worry. Sprinkler is rain. Very good. Yes, very, very good. Now let's mo move on to three very, very easy steps that are there. Trust me, when compared to the first four steps, the last three steps are the easiest, right? And we will quickly look at removal of weeds. Now, before I go ahead, can all of you tell me what are weeds, right? What do we mean by this term? And how are weeds different from crops? Yes, so this is a very important conceptual understanding that you need to know. Yes, Rekha, modern methods will save water. Yes, weeds are undesirable plants, unwanted plants. Very good. Very good, everybody. Very good. I can see wonderful answers coming in on the screen. 
So yes, weeds are nothing but undesirable plants that grow along with the crops. And these weeds, or we call them as undesirable or unwanted simply because they compete with the crops for water, light and nutrients, right? And it is important that we focus all our attention into the crops and make sure that we get good yield. But if these weeds start to grow along with it, then we see that it will affect the health, the, you know, how healthy the crops might be, which is why we need to remove these weeds. And this process of removal of weeds is what we call as weeding. Very good, everybody. Very good. I can see the answers coming in. Well done. Now, of course, we know that we can normally, you know, uproot the leaves, I mean, uproot these weeds during the process of tilling itself, right? So, when we discuss the process of preparation of soil, we saw that tilling helps in the removal of weeds as well. And we see that it can be done manually by using a kurpi. Now, we know that a kurpi would look something like this. Wait, let me just take a nice color. It will have a flattened blade and it will look like this with a handle. So this right here is how a kurpi would look like and we can get rid of it. And then of course we know that we can use weedy sides like 2,4-D. What is uprooting is plucking it out entirely. That is what we mean by uprooting. Sickle can be used but again see a lot of tools can be used here and there. Now I'll always tell you to remember what is a primary use because sometimes we can use seed drill even to do weeding right. So we just saw seed drill can also be used for this. But again, what is the primary function of the seed drill is to, you know, help with the process of sowing of seeds. So it's very important that you remember this. I, I completely agree with you, Akshat, but I hope all of you are also able to follow this part, right? Very good, Aditya. Very good. I will definitely send it on Telegram. Don't worry. I promise I will send it to you. Yes? So this was all about removal of weeds and what we understand as weeding. Now we will go on to understanding harvesting, right? Now, harvesting definition is also, again, very important, right? So, when we talk about harvesting, it is nothing but cutting of matured crops, right? So, a very simple definition. So, cutting of matured crops is what we call as harvesting, right? And we can harvest in two ways. Either we can pull it out of the soil entirely, which what we call as uprooting. You can take it up entirely. Or another way is to cut close to the ground, right? So if this is our plant, right, this is the whole plant, you cut it close to the ground and you get rid of it. Yes, very good, very good. Now, of course, we know that a sickle can be used for the process of harvesting. And here, using a sickle is a manual method, right? Individuals have to go cut close to the ground that is there. But at the same time, we can see that industrial methods can be used by using the combined machine. Very good, very good. So we do combine harvesting and as you can see here, we use this machine to get rid of it. I mean, to harvest the matured crop. Now, once we have harvested the crops, post-harvesting, two things need to be done. This is super, super, super important, right? Threshing and winnowing because this is the common confusion that is going to be there. Now, threshing can be defined as separating the grains from the stalk, right? So, this is what we mean by threshing. And here, as you can see here, if this is the stalk, right, there will be grains on this. Okay, let me draw a better image maybe, right? So, here, as you can see, these are the grains that are there. And to remove it or separate it out from the stalk is what we mean by threshing, right? And winnowing is when you do this and you separate the grains, right, from the chaff. Or I would say from the grains or seeds, right, both can be used. Separating seeds or grains from the chaff. So this is what we mean by winnowing, separating husk from grains, right? Yeah, you can say that also. Chaff, husk, you can say that. Very good. Removing impurity. Yes. Very good, everybody. Very good. I know, but are we all clear with threshing and winnowing? Because I always feel like this is one part that needs to be, you know, clearly separated out. Right? All right then. Now, quickly we will move on to the last step that is there, which is storage. And we know that storage is there to store the grains. And they can be stored in jute bags or metallic bins. And we know that some storage precautions are to be taken. For example, we can add neem leaves to the grain so that we get rid of uh, prevent bacterial growth and pests, right? 
dry the seed so that there is no moisture content that will promote the growth of microbes and by now all of you will be super sure about how to keep microbes away right and we know that large scale storage is done usually in granaries or we also have silos that help with the same moisture should be away right that's the most important thing now of course the last topic that is there so with this we have had a look at all the topics yes that we have looked at all the seven steps of agriculture last but not the least is to quickly have a brief understanding of animal husbandry and we know that animal husbandry is a practice where we rear animals that at a large scale for to obtain products from them for example we rear cows because we get milk from them we rear chickens because we get meat and eggs from them and we see that there's a lot of benefit of doing animal husbandry right so to get the animal based food products that we use so with this if you see we come to the end of today's class right and we have quickly looked at crop production and management in one shot right Chaff is nothing but the improp, the impurity that is there. It includes the husk and it also includes other maybe fine dust particles. So are we clear with what is chaff? Yes. Are we clear? And of course, be committed to our channel because see, this is the right time to prepare. Okay. And if you prepare well, you build your concepts well, you can of course be maybe the next boat topper. Right? So subscribe to our channel. We are a small family, but we are growing. Tell your friends to please come be a part of it, right? And of course, do join the Telegram family and the Telegram community. Link is there in the description box. We will be coming live on Fridays at 3 p.m. where you will be getting homework poll questions. And of course, we have a lot of exciting things coming up for you on Telegram as well, right? So do be a part of our Telegram community. Link is in the description box and you know we are all here for you. And this is a quick reminder to be a part of the and take up the worksheets that we have for you. This is just going to be worksheet one, but I'll be circulating more such worksheets for practice. Be honest while you're writing, type it in your own words. We will definitely have discussions on the same, right? I will definitely share mind maps and notes with all of you once again. Don't worry about it because you know that we've got you covered no matter what, right? That's our promise. Yes? So... If you like this video and in case if I missed out on some of your doubts, let me know in the comment section below. Show us your love by liking the video, telling it to your friends, subscribing to our channel, right? So do be a part of it. And yes, I am running short of time, right? In the description it is written. There will be one more. I will tag it in the comment section. Don't worry about it. Okay. So I think there has been some issue. In the comment section you will find the link for the worksheet. of uh, The Google form link for the worksheet. Yes. Thank you so much everyone for being a part of this amazing class. Hope you enjoyed today's session. Hoping to see you all very very soon again. Bye bye and have a nice day.